matzah. Works really well. Take a box, crumble it into small pieces, good to go. And I like the fact that these are everything matzahs and they have tons of flavor. So you're adding to your flavor and it's all good. The way we're actually gonna do this recipe today is we're gonna use a different ingredient all together. All right, now I have all my stuff together here right away, it's all finished. Um, I chopped up a pound of mushrooms. I have carrots, onions, and celery, and some garlic. Now I'm gonna show you how I chop up the onions and the, I mean, excuse me, the onion, celery, and garlic, and carrots. Are you ready for this? Okay. So I've got my cutting board right here, and I have my Swiss diamond, fabulous knives. Now you should know that this presentation was brought to you by me, Sharon Matten, from Coach Every Day and Everyday Gluten Free and Swiss Diamond. Okay, so we're gonna cut up the celery. I wanted to show you how we do these things because it's really simple. First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut the celery down the center so that the pieces are not too big. And I'm just gonna finish slicing them up like this. I wanna show you a phenomenal tool that I found. Uh, we call it the Hindi Chopper. And the reason why we call it the Hindi Chopper is that my dear friend Hindi told me about this chopper and I didn't believe her. I said, um, mm, I'll just use a knife. She's like, no, 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 no. This is way better. Also would have worked. 
Um, a lot of people do that. I like the next ingredient best. And the reason is because it ends up tasting kind of like a cornbread stuffing. Anybody guess what it is? I'll show you. One box of corn checks. No, really, a box of corn checks. It's fantastic. And what it does is it gives you that cornbready, like whole grain taste in your stuffing. And the consistency is just right for a little bit of crunch, but not too much. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. But in the meantime, we're waiting for our vegetables to continue to finish cooking. Okay? So They're dry, 
Why do I want to give you dry potatoes? Because when you use dry potatoes, the moisture doesn't steam the potatoes. You get crispy potatoes, and that's what you want. I'm gonna put this down here. All right. I'm grabbing my cutting board and my knife, and I'm gonna rotate just a little bit. I'm gonna move you guys back over here. It smells so good. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I've got my potatoes, they're dry, and I'm just gonna slice them into like an inch, three quarters of an inch. And I'm just gonna lay them, okay, in the bottom, it's a little big, of the pan. The most important thing though is to keep them even. Why? Because we're gonna stick the turkey on top of these potatoes. And when we do that, it's gonna create like a bed for the turkey, but the potatoes are gonna get all of that fantastic turkey flavor in them. They're the best potatoes you will ever have. I'm not joking. Okay, check out this knife, it is so good. All right, this one's a little big, but that's okay. Okay, I'm just lining them up in the pan. Do you guys see this? See, I'm just lining the potatoes in the pan. I have more potatoes than I'm gonna use here. We're prepping for Thanksgiving. We're making it really easy. You know, people get really stressed about Thanksgiving and I'm like, oh, Thanksgiving, easiest ever. Because what do we do so far? We cut up some vegetables, super simple. Let me close my garbage, it's so pretty. Cut up some vegetables, saute them in a pan. That's easy. I'm cutting up some potatoes, putting them in the pan. That's easy. Okay, I'm getting, it's almost full. I'm gonna add maybe one or two more. All right, we'll add this weird shaped one. And it's okay if they overlap a little bit. All right, that's good. Okay. So now the pan, the pan is filled with potatoes. Those are gonna be the potatoes that your guests are gonna eat. And they're gonna be like, whoa, those are the best potatoes I ever had. Now what we're gonna do, let me move this over, all right, is I'm gonna finish up the stuffing and then we're gonna put the bird in the pan. Okay, I'm gonna actually put a towel underneath my pan. It's a little hot. Now granted, should be able to handle it, but mm, might take a chance. So I'm putting the pan over here. Can you guys still see it? And I'm just gonna mix it. It's looking really good. But what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of liquid to it. Not too much because I don't want it to be mushy. So I'm grabbing some no chicken broth. All right, I like it. And the reason why I'm using no chicken broth instead of chicken broth is because if I have leftover stuffing, I can put it in a pan, you know, that didn't fit into, if I have leftover stuffing that didn't fit into the turkey, I can put it in a pan and everyone who's vegetarian or pescatarian or whatever they happen to be can eat this. So I'm really happy. Let me grab my measuring cup and we're gonna continue making the stuffing. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off a cup at a time. I don't want to put too much liquid in because then it'll get mushy. Okay? Now, first I'm going to put in one cup of this no chicken chicken broth. You can use regular chicken broth if you want to make it meatus of the gender meat. Okay. What adding the liquid just did, the jacks are gonna absorb the liquid. We don't wanna to add too much, because again, we don't want it to get mushy. I'm gonna add it, first I added one cup, all right, and I keep stirring it to see what it's gonna be. Now there's still some on the bottom, and I'm gonna stir it until that liquid from the bottom of the pan is completely absorbed. Any questions? 
I'm not seeing questions. You know, I have my laptop that I set up to check if we have questions. And I really should check because last time I did a live, I didn't see all the questions that were there. All right. There's still a little bit left on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. That's almost all absorbed. Okay, so now I'm going to feel it. It's pretty close. I'm going to add just another half a cup. I don't want to add more than that because it'll get too mushy. So I'm just adding one more half a cup. Okay. And that's it. Yeah, see, the you don't want the checks to really start falling apart. Okay, that's perfect. So I ended up adding about two and a half cups. The next thing we're going to add is we're going to add some spices. Okay, we're going to start them. We're going to add some you are. We're going to add, oh, it's suspected spam. That's even worse. Okay. We're going to add some onion, granulated onion. We're going to add some paprika. That gives it great flavor. And no, I'm not measuring because I just like a lot of flavor. Okay, I'm going to add some granulated garlic. Even though we added garlic and we added onion, we're just going to give it more flavor. I'm not adding salt because the checks themselves have salt and the turkey has salt. And even though it is, you know, not real chicken broth, it still has salt. I have some black pepper. I'm gonna be a little bit more careful with the black pepper. That I'm gonna put in my hand and you can see how much I have. Whee! All right. Now, I'm gonna do something that's really interesting that my father-in-law taught me to do. And that is, I have two eggs that I'm gonna mix into the stuffing. And the reason is, it gives the stuffing a nice consistency. It doesn't end up being completely mushy. It will allow you to have this really nice texture, almost like a cobble-ish, but not quite. So we're gonna dump the two eggs in, and we're gonna carefully mix them. Now at this point, I'm, you see how gently I'm tossing the stuffing? Because I don't want the checks to fall apart. I wanna still maintain some of the integrity of the base of this stuffing. I want to make sure though that the egg is completely mixed in. Okay, you can see the checks, some of the checks are actually coming apart a little bit. That's okay. We don't have a problem with that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the stuffing into a separate bowl a little bit at a time. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't know how much stuffing is going to fit in the turkey. It depends on your turkey. And this way, I don't want to have contaminated stuffing with my turkey hands. Does that make sense? So I'm being very careful to separate out the stuffing that I'm going to put into the bird from what I'm going to bake separately. Now I'm going to get my bird. Okay, we've got our meatless bowl. This bowl is Flayship. It used to have a sticker on it that said, oh, there it is. It's meat. All right. I've got my gloves here. One, two. I like to wear gloves when I'm doing this. One. And two. And now I'm gonna dump a bunch of the stuffing into this bowl. That looks really good, doesn't it? Okay, the checks still have some integrity, but they're not completely soft. They're not completely crunchy either. So now I'm taking the turkey from the meat bowl. I'm not taking the turkey anywhere. I'm taking the stuffing. Okay, and I'm putting it in my bird. I'm just shoving it in there. Now there may be people who tell you to do this differently. I can't speak for them. This is how I do it. So the other question I get a lot is how long do you cook your turkey for? That's a really good question. And I'm not gonna answer it in a very straightforward way. And the reason is because you need a thermometer. 
Yes, if you buy something that one important very thing for your kitchen, was that good English? If you buy something for your kitchen, buy an oven thermometer. <laughs> there are some that you can use even with your phone. You can stick them into your, whatever it is, in your oven, and then there's a cord that can lead out of your oven, which can connect to even to your phone. But you need a temperature on your bird. And the reason is because everybody's oven is different. My oven, I have a fancy schmancy oven. It's true. And it comes with a thermometer in the oven. So I have a cord that is in the oven that I will stick into my bird and then connect to my oven. Oh, see, I still have a little bit of room for my stuffing, but I'm glad I did this because I have some left over now and it's not gonna have to be in the bird. All right, yeah, that's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna spoon one more, one or two more spoons in here, okay? But they're not contaminated now because I'm using the separate bowl. All right, so now we're just gonna shove that on like that. How pretty is that? Now, I don't know if you remember, but when I showed you the roasting pan to begin with, I had this cord. It's cooking twine. And what I'm going to do with the cooking twine is I'm going to tie this baby up onto my cabinet. Thank you. I'm glad I had the drawer open. Oh, that would have been bad. All right. And I'm just tying the legs together. Yeah, some of the stuffing is falling out. We'll have to fix it. Life goes on. Okay, and I'm just making a little bow. There you go, baby. On the top. See? And when the turkey is done, hey, go, go back in. Go back in. Okay. That's my favorite. So that when the turkey is done cooking, all right, I'll cut off that ribbon, that cooking twine, and it's going to be awesome. Now, what do I do on the top of the bird? So far, we've got all this stuff in the, in the pan and it's gonna all cook together. And we're gonna cook this turkey until it reaches 165 degrees. That's how you know when your turkey is done. It must reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees. That's what I got when I got my sanitation license. I learned all these things. So that's important so you don't kill the people who are eating your meal with salmonella or some other bacteria. It has to reach 165 degrees. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. I'm taking these off, and I'm gonna get another pair in a second. But how do I season this guy now? What do I do with it? How do I make the crispy outside? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going back to my old friend, the garlic oil. I love this stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour a little bit on the top of my turkey friend. Okay, not too much, just a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna grab another pair of gloves because I didn't want to touch the, uh, the oil bottle with raw turkey gloves, right? That would have been really a good way to contaminate my kitchen <laughs> with bacteria. So we didn't do that. This is called safe cooking with Sharon Matten. All right on our other surgical and now I'm gonna massage the bird hello my bird are you nice and relaxed we're massaging you with some yummy yummy garlic oil okay yes I'm having a wonderful relationship with my turkey all right so then what do I do now how do I make this what kind of herbs or whatever do I put on it now everybody has their different preference all right I happen to like something called bouquet garni, which is a different mix of different herbs that you can get together. There's a lot of different things that you can put on top of your turkey. That's up to you. So you can do another mix of onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika if you want. I am going to put on a little bit of bouquet garni. I'm almost out, which is why we're not going to finish it. And I'm going to show you what else I'm going to use. Okay? So here's my bouquet garni. Bouquet Garni normally has savory, rosemary, thyme, 
oregano, basil, dill, marjoram, sage, and tarragon. Delicious. All right. This one that I'm going to use today is called Herbs de Provence. Okay, so Herbs de Provence has spices, including rosemary, marjoram, thyme, and savory. Perfect for a turkey. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the cover off. And we've already massaged the turkey with the oil. So this is going to stick to it really well. Look how pretty that looks. And when it's roasting, it's going to be fantastic. Now, when I didn't have a fancy oven, okay, that's a lot. That's okay. It's going to be delicious. When I didn't have a fancy oven, what we used to do is we would cover the turkey, okay, and cook it for fifth, about 15 minutes a pound. And then at the end, we would take the foil off of it because we cook it covered so that all the heat stayed in the bird. And then we'd take the foil off at the last part of the roasting so that the skin would crisp and you'd get that nice, delicious, crispy skin. What I'm going to do is I have a fancier oven, and a lot of you do now. It's not such a um, different thing to have it. I have a something called convection roast. Now, what convection roast is, it's convection, which circulates the air in your oven, and roast gives you heat from the bottom and some heat from the top. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's 60-40. So 60% of the heat is coming from the bottom, and 40% of the heat is coming from the top. And because the air is circulating, you get that crispy skin, and because you get the heat from the bottom, which really is gonna cook your bird through, and from the top, so it's a little bit more evenly cooked and fabulous when you're done. I wanna show you how I cook my turkey. So remember I told you about the temperature probe? Where do you put your temperature probe when you have it? You're going to stick it in the meatiest part of the thigh, because that is the part of the turkey that takes longest to cook. I'll repeat it. You're going to put the temperature probe, like you're taking the temperature of your turkey. It's not sick. It's going to be awesome. This is going to go in the meatiest part of the thigh. Now, I'm going to turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, excuse me, Mr. Bird. This is the meatiest part of the thigh. Now, why am I saying that it has to be the temperature? Because it may be a little frozen inside. I thought I defrosted it completely, but it feels a little frozen inside. So I don't know exactly how long it's gonna cook. I need to make sure that I get it to the right temperature. So I'm gonna put this in the oven, okay? And then it's gonna cook until it hits 165 degrees. We're done with our turkey. Stay tuned because we have lots more Thanksgiving to do.